Hey there, welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today, your go-to venue to find out what's going on around this extraordinary city. It is that time of year when there's plenty uh, happening right here in Dubai. Uh, tonight though, we're gonna focus on journeys. Yeah, we're gonna be talking to entrepreneurs. We know a lot of people come here uh, to obviously see their dreams come true, to see their visions become a reality. We often mention entrepreneurs and talk about the beginning of the journey, but what about the journey it continues. There's something special when it comes to an entrepreneur. Why do we speak to so many serial entrepreneurs? All questions, we've got some special guests a little later on. Let's see what's coming up tonight. I head over to the Jumeirah Lake Towers to experience an authentic Thai food experience firsthand with the founder of Cafe Essa. Plus, we've got rising R&B singer Bia Kadri joining us with a special performance from our exclusive The Fridge. Guys, there's so much to look forward to on the show today. There's a little bit of entertainment, typical DXB style, a little bit of everything. Plus, we've got a lot of serial entrepreneurs coming on the show to tell us a little bit about everything that they've been through and to really understand what goes behind the mastermind of it all. Yeah, there's a nice common theme in the show today. I know that we focus a lot on that sort of entrepreneurial spirit that runs through um, Dubai, the positivity that this city brings, the opportunity that, that it, it affords to many people. And we're going to be meeting um, several very special guests right here on the sofa, all from sort of different backgrounds, all from different landscapes, but shared vision and passion. You know, they've seen an opportunity in the market. They've delivered something that, that addressed an issue or a, a, something that was missing in the market. Uh, they've got out the other side, they continued that entrepreneurial journey. And I mean, you can even read that into um, your uh, Cafe Hassan experience as well. When you talk to the founders of Cafe Hassan, they didn't come here with a view of setting up a Thai restaurant. It's something that became an opportunity whilst being here as well they spied that opportunity yeah and and the venues that they've got are, are really great venues and the locations are really good because they're going after a, a, a typical particular market of people uh, but they recently got into the timeout market which is really nice um, so it's great to see all of these these success stories but as you said there's also a reality behind the success stories as well um, which which makes you believe that it's possible when you get the real stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? When someone's giving you the real deal, it, it really does put it into perspective, certain things, because they're all hair-bearing schemes in your mind, really. You're like, oh, I could do that, I could do that. And then someone's like, nah, this is what happens. If you want to have three, four venues, this is what you've got to do. This is how much you've got to have. And it's just, um, it's a lovely place to be. We've got great advice coming your way. We're going on a journey, Ash. Absolutely, a journey, lots Ash. to unpack <laughs> over there. So speaking of success stories, let's find out who our guest co-host today is. My name is Muna Ataya. I'm the founder of Mums World, and I look forward to seeing you very soon in the studio. And Mona will join us in just a little bit, but first, you know I'm a foodie and I love Dubai. I love going around the city and finding out new things, but I've been looking for a really authentic Thai food experience, and I didn't have to go too far. Have a look. <laughs> Now I've got a few words that I can describe my mood right now. Um, I'm just gonna give you one, outstanding. Because this is one of my dreams. It's a tick box thing that I've been wanting to do for ages. And that's eat the food from Cafe Assange. And meet the person behind it, of course, legend. Chef New, listen, please tell me, how did you have this amazing mind when it comes to Thai food? Because you're not a chef by trade, you, you learn, right? Yeah, I learn. I learn everything, you know, from people, from um, my customer, from my mom, from everybody. Mm. I just love food, so people recommend me this and this and that. I just, you know, like create and have a thing, go to buy some food everywhere in Dubai, Thailand also. I love eating, so I go everywhere <laughs> to get my, you know, like good, Test, yeah. you know, like my test. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we open a restaurant as well, also. Because I want to present my, you know, test yeah. to other people. Well, you won the award. You won yeah, Time Out we, Awards as well. We won, yeah. We won Time Out Awards five times. Mm. 
one best budget and four best Thai. You can talk about it. Mm -hmm. People can talk about it, but the real star and the real proof is mm -hmm. in the food. Yeah. And this is why I'm here. Yeah. And I need to try it. Let's try. What do you suggest? So we got papaya salad. Th and this that one looks nice. really spicy, yeah. Papaya salad. This yeah. is a famous salad, right? Yeah. Everyone. This one is an just mm. special for Isan mm. people because we're using fermented fish sauce. Not everybody mm. loves it, but we, you know. And we also have this at the restaurant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In mm. My mom selling this one. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes. Thank you so mm. much for being you, for, for blessing everyone with this fantastic food. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll definitely be back 100%. Yeah. Let's make some noise. I look forward to seeing what, what happens in the future as well. Thank yeah. you so much, Chef Nguyen. Kokunka. 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 And there we have it, another flavorful foodie adventure. Cafe Asan is extremely special. Cheers, mate authentic and the passion of Chef New is second to none. You know, the only way of getting even more traditional than this is by going to Thailand. From humble beginnings to a roaring success, make sure and check out Cafe Isan. You're lucky old Lane. Yes. Another feed, yeah? <laughs> Another feed at the show, yeah? Yeah, bring them on, bring them on. You can't go wrong with Thai food ever. He's managing his budgets at the moment, isn't he? That's what I tell you, eh? <laughs> Very entrepreneurial of you. Indeed. See? indeed Good on you. Uh, right, we are. Time now to get on with the, uh, the main theme of the show. And I couldn't ask for a better guest to kick things off. Our guest co-host today uh, is renowned as the founder of the largest online inventory in the GCC. Uh, is the most funded uh, women-led e-commerce company in the Middle East. Uh, she's been named in the top 100 most powerful business women in 2023. But at the very core of this is that posh, passion for uh, entrepreneurial spirit, a true serial entrepreneur, an absolute pleasure to welcome Mona Attire to the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, it's, it, it is, it, it's so great to have you here. If, if our core principle today is to try to get to the basis of that that journey as well, that, that entrepreneurial journey that so many people seem to start here, um, not just in Dubai, but in the region as a whole, encouraged by the infrastructure, encouraged by others as well. Is that the right way to approach it? Do you set out as, on it as a journey moving forward? Sure. Um, I was one of the early digital entrepreneurs in the region. Yeah. I came back to the region in 2000 um, and my uh, fuel at the time was to be part of the pioneers that would disrupt the digital ecosystem. Um, my first venture in Dubai was with Bait.com. I was a co-founder of Bait.com and we set out to revolutionize recruitment in the Arab world through a digital platform. Mm. Um, and that was the time when Middle Easterners like us left the region, we got uh, great educations, but never came back to the region because of this perceived lack of opportunity. Mm. Um, and simply the challenge was connecting job seekers and employers back in 2000 was very difficult. So we came back to the region to use a digital enabler, bait.com, to change that. Mm. Um, Bait.com was a pioneer on many fronts. It was the first business that connected job seekers and employers uh, remotely, um, not only locally, but regionally and globally. It was the first digital play that raised VC, sophisticated VC capital from abroad, yeah. capital that came and exited. Um, and it's also um, one of the digital players that not only uh, uh, survived the test of time, but thrived in the test of time and continued um, to grow profitably and successfully. Mm. Today, Bait has 50 million job seekers. That's half the labor force of the region, including the UAE, is on Bait. Mm. Uh, tens of thousands of employers are on the platform. And it's a brand that I'm very proud uh, to have been part of um, and um, truly revolutionize the way we look at digital uh, platforms 
um, in the region. Game changer, wasn't it? It was a game changer, yeah. um, and it really broke all the rules. And the fact that it's made so, remained so relevant this day yeah. as well is is is, is yes. fundamental to that game changing. Yes. yes. Well, I have a lot of admiration, particularly for female entrepreneurs such as yourself. My question to you is: Being an entrepreneur is scary enough. What does it take to be a serial entrepreneur? Sure. Um, it takes a deep desire to change the status quo and to solve unmet needs. So for me, with BAIT, it was about uh, changing the ecosystem, supporting the ecosystem and supporting jobs and jobs for employers and job seekers. Uh, fast forward to mum's world, um, as a mother of three children, I felt firsthand and I experienced firsthand the frustrations that the mother consumer faced. So on one side, we had unmet needs of the mother. Um, on the other side, we had an e-commerce trend that was the biggest trend of the decade that was very real. Um, and so the desire to use enablers to solve problems is what drives entrepreneurs. The desire to create uh, impact in your ecosystem. Um, and I think last but certainly not least, it's uh, being fearless, knowing that the worst that can happen is you don't solve the problem the way you want it to and then you keep on trying. That's the worst that can happen. So um, as an entrepreneur, I've always been driven by uh, ecosystem impact, social impact, um, and trying to create a difference in the environment and in the ecosystem that, that I live in. So Mona, I, I would love to know about your hiatus when you left, you said you left Dubai and then came back. When you went away, what was going through your mind uh, and were you seeing other entrepreneurial journeys in other countries and a lot of countries are selling on their companies and, and, and doing this and, and what, but how did you plug in back to the region? So I was um, in the corporate ecosystem, first in the US and then in Europe and I spent that time learning and building skills and building networks because to be an entrepreneur without knowing what you're doing is not the smartest uh, path to take. So I spent my time teaching myself, building skills um, and resources so that when I did come back to the region, which is home for me, um, I could add value. Um, and that's really what I did. So there was a tipping point where I felt that I had um, enough tools and skills to come back and contribute to the regional uh, digital uh, revolution, which is really what happened. We were the first tenants in Dubai Internet City. I mean, we were there when Dubai Internet City uh, uh, launched. Um, we were um, the, the, the first kind of digital platforms that presented themselves to the region. Um, and so with that, you have the, the joy of shaping um, the ecosystem in a way that, um, that you feel is worthy and is, is uh, long term. When you invest so much time, so much money, so much energy, so much emotion into, into building a brand as well, as a founder does when you set out on that journey 24 7, uh, you sleep and live, sleep and breathe it, you know, all your life. When do you know is the right time to get out? Sure. Um, and how do you separate the emotion from the business decision? Sure. So that's a great question. Um, I, um, I put the parallel of being a parent. You know, when you're a parent, you raise your children, you nurture them, you teach them fundamentals and skills, and then you let them out into the world. And you hope that they will take what they've learned from you and be solid, contributing, happy members of society. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you don't control it and you cannot keep holding on to them. It's the same with businesses. So, um, you know, with BAIT, I, when I stepped down from BAIT um, 11 years into the journey, um, it was at a time when I had written the business plan for Mums World. So I wrote the business plan for Mums World in 2011 with a very important need gap that I wanted to solve. Um, and with e-commerce being super nascent, I wanted to be the pioneer. So the time was right for me to jump into this very nascent ecosystem and start shaping it. Um, with Mums World, two years ago, um, a buyer came to us. At the time, uh, Mums World was the largest e-commerce platform for all things mother, baby and child. It was the pioneer, it is the pioneer. Um, we were the gateway into over three million households in the Arab world. We had built a respected, admired business in the region. Um, and I felt 
um, I had served my purpose. I had done my job. I had done what I had set out to do and created a brand that had fundamentals that would outlive me. And um, with the world changing, with the macro environment and the micro environment shifting daily, um, I knew that my passions had shifted, um, my skills and um, what I can contribute on a larger scale to the ecosystem, strategically to the ecosystem, went far beyond Mom's World. Mm -hmm. And that's when I made the decision that it's now time to hand over this great business, um, this business that's in hyper growth, and for me to start um, contributing to the ecosystem in a broader way, mm -hmm. in a bigger way, um, and to solve other consumer need gaps. The other thing also for me, um, as an entrepreneur, I spent a lot of my time over the years doing what I love, and that is to mentor, yeah. coach, and invest in young entrepreneurs, particularly women. Um, this is something that took a good portion of my time. Um, and again, given what's happening in the world today, um, my, um, I'm fueled in that direction. So the time was right. So you, you, as an entrepreneur, you know. You know, when you hand over and you take the leap of faith to, to what's next, what's bigger. Yeah. I think anybody with a child is familiar with Mum's World. I used to be a huge consumer of Mum's World myself. Mona, please stick around. There's so much more we want to chat to you about and learn from you. Uh, we are right here to receive some pearls of wisdom from okay. you. And now let's get a sneak peek at the artist featured on tonight's show. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Bea Kadri. I'm a Lebanese singer-songwriter. I'll be performing Come Over today, my original song from my latest album. Stay tuned to the end of the show to watch it. And coming up, we are evolving from the B2C space with the founder of the growing global engagement technology startup in the GCC. So don't go anywhere. 